Frank? Welcome to Hope One, ladies and gentlemen. You are in for a treat tonight. Max McLean, the award-winning actor, the founder and artistic director of the Fellowship for Performing Arts, will be with us in just a few minutes. Max is the star of a brand new movie that's coming out this particular Wednesday, November 3rd. It's called C.S. Lewis, uh, The Most Reluctant Convert. It's the untold story of C.S. Lewis, and it's going to premiere this Wednesday night at a theater near you. In a few minutes, we'll tell you how you can actually see this movie, a movie you are going to want to see. And uh, you are also going to be able to ask Max a question right here on this program tonight via video. What you need to do, what you need to do is go to crossexamine.org forward slash guest. You see it at the bottom of the screen right here. Crossexamine.org forward slash guest. Follow the cues. We're going to take five questioners tonight to ask Max McLean, who again is playing C.S. Lewis in this feature film that's going to be actually opening this Wednesday, November 3rd. You're going to want to be a part of it. We're going to take five of you to ask Max a question. So start that process now. Go to crossexamine.org forward slash guest, and you will join. Uh, us a little bit later here in the program. We're going to show you the trailer to the movie. We're going to ask Max some questions about the movie, how it came about, what's in it, why you should see it. We'll also get some some inside uh, information on C.S. Lewis. But let me tell you a little bit about Max. I've known Max for several years. He not only has done some amazing theater work, he is also the voice of the Bible in many different translations. For example, if you listen to the NIV translation of the Bible, that's Max McLean. Now, Max has adapted for the stage un unbelievable works like the Screw Tape Letters, uh, the, the C.S. Lewis on stage, the most reluctant convert. In fact, he's going to tell us a little bit later as to where that play is coming in in uh, the ensuing weeks. He's also done the Great Divorce on stage. He's done Genesis and also Mark's Gospel. He's acted out the entire Mark's Gospel by himself. And he's also been the producer of several other works, including Martin Luther on Trial, The Great Divorce. These are plays that come to different cities around the country, and you're going to be able to see some of them. But the issue we're talking about tonight, the great event we're talking about tonight, is the brand new feature-length movie that's coming out this Wednesday. So let me introduce the great Max McLean to join me tonight and answer your questions. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Max McLean. Wow, I enjoyed that, Frank. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them on, Hor. I don't see him on my screen. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Here he is. Max, how are you this morning? How, how are you this evening? Uh, terrific, Frank. Good to be with you. It's great being with you. Let's start at the beginning. Let's start with your career in the beginning. How did you sure. ever get involved in theater and movies? How did all this happen, Max? Yeah, well, uh, I started acting uh, in college to get over sociophobia. Hmm. the fear of being in front of people. So at a particular point in college, I, I knew I had a problem. So I went to the weird part of campus, the drama department, and took an oral interpretation class. And that's where the bug bit. Hmm. So that's where theater began. Uh, it was prior to coming to Christ, some adult convert to Christianity. Uh, so I that happened uh, roughly at 2021. And uh, I came to Christ uh, at the ripe old age of 23. Mm -hmm. And how did that happen? How did you come to Christ at the age of 23 after engaging in an acting career? How did you, well, usually um, those things don't, those two things no, don't go and together. It, and, and, and well, they, it, it really was, uh, uh, they are related uh, in, in one sense. Uh, you know, when you, when you look at the arc of one life, the arc of one's life, and you see how providence works. Uh, the Lord uh, knew that I had a desire to communicate, uh, but I was kind of blocked up and locked up. Uh, and so he gave me some tools to express what was in me. And that's kind of what an actor uh, does. He uses one's voice, one's body, one's mind to illuminate great literature, great ideas, great thoughts. And, uh, and then 
uh, uh, about a year and a, or a half or so later, he gave me the greatest message in the world to communicate. So mm. those are those two things are related. As to how I uh, I went from uh, once I was blind, now I see. Um, I was uh, invited to read the Bible, um, and uh, uh, it was I read John's Gospel in one sitting. Mm. And I thought uh, Jesus was going to come out of the pages. Now, I tried to read the Bible before, and I, I simply did not have eyes to see or ears to hear. So the book seemed to be uh, uh, locked. So I, I really see that as a, as a kind of a supernatural event. But what was different, and, and in many ways, uh, my story in, in, in many ways tracks with Lewis's story, uh, because he thought of the Bible as kind of a textbook. Uh, a book of wisdom, parables, prescription, that sort of thing. He never really saw it as uh, a a biography of almost a superhero. Uh, and uh, uh, you know the what what uh, the myth that became fact. Mm -hmm. the, the you know the whole idea. You know he he was very much into uh, myths. And uh, and he he understood about uh, these dying and rising god myths of Osiris, Balder, Dionysus, and uh, at a long this is in our films one of the most important parts of our film uh, film right at Addison's Walk he has a long night's talk with uh, with uh, J R Tolkien and Hugo Dyson and uh, Dyson explained to him that when you meet a god sacrificing himself in a pagan story you like it very much uh as long as you meet it anywhere except in the gospels mm -hmm. and then he went on to say that the story of christ is a myth just like every other myth with one tremendous difference it really happened mm. and uh, a supernatural uh, unveiling emerged it with him and uh, that uh, that uh, inspired him to uh read the bible differently and he saw Jesus as this extraordinary hero. And he came to the conclusion, uh, you know, either this man was and is a son of God or he's a, a liar uh, 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 on the level of someone who claims to be a poached egg, uh, a, a lunatic uh, or, you know, a liar, you know, from the devil from hell or or uh, he is the Lord. He says, you know, if he's a uh, a lunatic or a liar from the devil of hell, you know, if, if uh, unless you can believe that, which is the other alternative. And he said, I can't. You turn to the Christian story. And uh, and then and that's where uh, he uh, gave himself to Jesus. Mm. Now, this movie that is coming out this next Wednesday and may extend a few more days after that in theaters around the country. And in a minute, we'll tell you how you can watch this movie. Uh, how, how you can find it in your neighborhood. How did this movie come about, Max? Because this is not a typical grade B Christian movie. This is a major motion picture with a Hollywood director. How did this come about? Well, well he's a British director, but he's won several yeah. Emmy Awards, several uh, BAFTA Awards, which is the British equivalent to uh, uh, the Oscars. His name's mm -hmm. Norman Stone. Uh, I, many of your listeners have probably seen uh, the uh, BBC version, the original version of, of Shadowlands, the story of Lewis's late in life marriage to Joy Davidman. Um, that was Lewis's uh, brainchild. Uh, then it became a play, then it became a major motion picture with uh, uh, Anthony Hopkins and Deborah Winger. So uh, Norman did that. Uh, he's done over 100 films and he did the Narnia Code, Planet Narnia, uh, works with Michael Ward. Uh, he and I have been friends. We met at an arts conference about 10 years ago. Uh, he's uh, uh, He was born in a preacher's home. Mm -hmm. uh, his, uh, he's Scottish. The name of his denomination is uh, Strict and Particular Baptist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he said it was a denomination so small that not even God has heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, but that's obviously not true because people that have come from that denomination include uh, Martin Lloyd Jones, okay, the, fam the, the famous British preacher. So he grew up in a preacher's home, was a very artistic child. Went to went to art school, went to film school, and uh, had a vision similar to mine 
of producing film from a Christian worldview to meant to engage a, a, a intellectually diverse audience. And uh, we've met and, and uh, you know, we communicated regularly, he comes to New York a lot. Uh, so uh, about in 2019, uh, you know, this, the, the, the play I was doing, which was where the, the film began, the film began as a play, mm -hmm. The Most Reluctant Convert was touring uh, regularly. It was a, had a really good following, played a lot of colleges and universities. And uh, I called him and said, I'd like to send you the script and I'd like to see if we could talk about doing a movie. And uh, he looked the script, loved the script. So we started looking, uh, you know, we started talking about how we would make it. But in our minds, we saw this as 2022, 2023 uh, uh, project. Uh, this was, you know, uh, we this was the fall of 19, the January and February 2020. Then March 12th came and uh, everything shut down. We had uh, three ro three shows on the road. We had screw tape letters touring. Uh, uh, the weekend that that it toured, screw tape letters was in Colorado Springs. The Great Divorce was in Houston. We just closed a modern adaptation of Paradise Lost here in New York at the Theater Row. I was uh, just finished a show at Northwestern University. I was about to do a show at, at the University of Michigan uh, of the most reluctant convert, the play, and all that stopped. Now, of course, you and I remember that. You know, we thought this was going to be a short-term thing. Right. You know, remember 15 days to flatten the curve? Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. now 15 months. It was well, going. It, was, it was, yeah. went on and on and on right. and on. And, you know, 15 days to flatten the curve. I thought, you know, well, well, well what am I going to do for the next two weeks? You know, and so, <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then when it came to time to that, you know, that uh, this is going to be a prolonged uh, shutdown, uh, you know, I got a little concerned what we were going to do. And then Norman told me that uh, the British government was going to open up filmmaking uh, under very strict protocols in uh, uh, in August of 2020. And that if uh, we could get our act together, he could get a really good crew and a really good cast because nobody had worked since March. If, you know, we could be the first out of the gate or, you know, soon first out of the gate. And uh, uh, I said, well, you know, confirm that we can get the locations that uh, that we need, mm -hmm. you know, Modlin mm -hmm. College, Oxford, the Kilns, uh, uh, all those places. And I'll go to my board, see if I can get the funding to put the film in the can, you know, get it. Uh, we can mm -hmm. talk about post-production. We can talk about uh, um, uh, distribution uh, later. And so uh, then we had to get the rights from C.S. Lewis Estate. We had the rights to do the theatrical production. We didn't have film rights. We had to get those rights. Um, and, uh, then on August 31st, I got on a, on a plane as big as air force one with fewer people on it <laughs> and, uh, flew to London, quarantined for two weeks, began shooting in mid September, finished in mid October. And here we are a year later, uh, about ready to, uh, uh launch our film. Here's the film, ladies and gentlemen, cslewismovie.com, cslewismovie.com. If you go there right now, don't leave this stream because we're going to talk more about it, but and we're about to show you the trailer. Go to cslewismovie.com and put your location in, and if your browser knows your location, it will bring up the theaters that are in your neighborhood that this coming Wednesday night, you can go to this movie and uh, go to the theater and see the movie, and it might add a couple of more dates on there. There are a few more dates that might be added after Wednesday, but you can definitely see it this coming Wednesday. Go to C.S. Lewis movie. Dot com. Before we show you the, 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 the trailer, though, Max, I need to ask you this. What is really in this movie? It's called The Untold, uh, the Untold Story of C.S. Lewis. What's in there? Yeah. Generally. I know you can't give the whole thing away, but. No, no. It's. Uh, I didn't. Many people don't know how much of a vigorous debunker C.S. Lewis was. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had tremendous rhetorical gifts. And so he was actually using those gifts to debunk Christianity, you know, it would have been similar to your old friend Christopher Hitchens in terms of his rhetorical skills. Um, you know, he dabbled in, in the occult. Uh, but I also think that, uh, you know, he had a, uh, he had a very, uh, he had a terrible childhood in the sense he lost his mother to cancer when he was nine. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he, 
prayed for her to uh, to be brought back to him, and mm -hmm. and he said, that, you know, he did, when that didn't happen, he thought, well, prayer doesn't work. Uh, he had a really tough relationship with his dad that got worse after his mom died. Uh, then, as a young man, and we had, you know, we have. Uh, I'll tell you the uh, the structure of it later. Uh, then uh, he uh, enlists in the army when he's a young man, at, and uh, was in the trenches in France at 19. And he said, "That's where the that's the hell where youth and laughter go," where he saw horribly smashed men still moving about like crushed beetles. Um, so as a result of those experiences and many others, he had such a pessimistic uh, view of life that he came to the conclusion either that there's no God behind the universe, a God indifferent to uh, good and evil, or worse, an evil God. Mm. And that's the kind of the, uh, the, the, the starting point to his journey to Christ. Now, there are three different people that play C.S. Lewis in this movie. You play the older Lewis. Who are the other two? Yeah, I play the older Lewis, and, and he's, he's looking back on his memories. And, and in fact, the, the structure of the film is that he lives in his memory, and his memories come alive. And so he goes back uh, in time. So Lewis is like in his 50s, looking back, first of all, as a boy, losing his mom. At nine, we have a, a wonderful young actor, Eddie Ray Martin, who plays the boy Lewis. And then uh, uh, the young Lewis... Uh, uh, is played by uh, Nicholas Ralph. He's the one that goes off to war, becomes a goes to school at, at Oxford, becomes a scholar. Uh, that's played by uh, this rising star in Britain, uh, Nicholas Ralph, who plays the lead James Harriet in the in the uh, uh, big hit uh, production uh, that was here on Masterpiece Theatre and is uh, playing right now in, in the UK as well. Of all creatures, great and small. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and then we also cast uh, actors for Tolkien, for Owen Barfield, for Hugo Dyson, Lewis's mom and dad, Warney, uh, his great teacher Kirkpatrick, the great Knock. Uh, so it's a you know it's it's filmed in twenty locations in and around Oxford. Uh, it's fifteen actors, uh, one hundred and ninety extras, two hundred and forty costumes. So it's it's quite a production. And you'll be able to see it this coming Wednesday night. Go to cslewismovie.com. If you want to ask Max McLean a question who plays C.S. Lewis, not only in this movie, but on stage, just go to crossexamine.org forward slash guest. Follow the cues if you want to be on camera. If you want to put a question in the, in the YouTube chain or the YouTube chat here, we'll take them there as well. We'll take Super Chats first if we can. Uh, but we're going to show you the trailer here in just a minute. The trailer of the new movie. Are, are we queued up, ready for ready for that to go, Jorge? We are, brother. All right. Here's the trailer to the new C.S. Lewis movie. Check this out. I never cared for my name, Clive Staples. The world came to know me as C.S. Lewis. Perhaps you've read my books. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is the most famous. But there's one story that's not so well known. It's my story. And who better to tell it than me? Cheers. Catch up! Hey, Jack, no, stop! Don't disturb your father! Oh. Boys! Your mother loves you very much. <laughs> At 14, I ceased to be a Christian. She was the first woman to speak to my blood. I love the smell of bunting. And I was undone. Have you nothing to say in your defense? William Kirkpatrick, the great knock. Now that there's no God behind the universe, a God indifferent to good and evil, or worse, an evil god. Do you believe that logic and reason bring forth indisputable truth? I do. And are your moral and aesthetic judgments valid and meaningful? They are. For the first time, I examined myself with a serious, practical purpose. What I found appalled me. How could a mere man be called a great moral teacher and say the sort of things Jesus said? Such as?
That night, as I read Fantasties, my imagination was baptized. The rest of me took a little longer. Max, that looks fabulous. This movie that's coming out this coming Wednesday, November 3rd. Again, folks, you want to see this movie? Just go to cslewismovie.com and it will show you locally where the movie's going to be playing. Max, what was the uh, what was the feel on the set when you were filming this movie? How did you sense it was coming along? Did you think it would turn out this well? Um, I was very impressed with the crew. Uh, it was actually uh, the crew that Kenneth Branagh uses for his movies. Uh, they were available. They had just finished a shoot, and they came right to us. They were top-notch. Uh, the, the Norman Stone runs a very tight ship, uh, and uh, there was a great vibe on the set. Of course, it was all during COVID. We had to be tested every day. And, and I tell you, if one positive test with the wrong person, if it was an extra, you just get rid of the extra and that's it. Uh -huh. But if it's a lead actor who couldn't work, you know, we have to shut down the set. Uh, so uh, that, uh, that was another providential event that we got through uh, that month, you know, in the, in the heart of COVID. And, and the other thing is I mentioned that, that the British government opened uh, for filmmaking at sort of the end of August. And, then they shut down the end of October. Wow. So we had that small window between the mid-September and mid-October that we were able to shoot. No. And, uh, and, and uh, people were talking about the script. Uh, you know, we moved. We, it was a 95-page script. We were doing five, six, eight pages a day, which is pretty fast for movies. Mm -hmm. You know, two or three pages a day is usually a lot. Right. So... Uh, uh, it was a, a very robust set, you know, going from one location to the other uh, and all those marvelous uh, scenes of, of Oxford. If you've been to Oxford, man, this is this is going to bring it all back. Well, you filmed it all on location. You, we were talking before the show that Lewis hardly even left Great Britain. He'd only been out of it a couple of times. That was yeah. his home, right? Yeah, Where he, you were filming all he didn't this. Travel much. You know, he went uh -huh. to London. He went to London regularly to do broadcast talks. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, he uh, he taught at Oxford from uh, he was in Oxford from 1919 to 1954, taught. Uh, he was a student from 1919 to 1924, 25. And then then he became a fellow in 25 to 54 in Oxford. And then from 54 till he retired in 1963 in the summer of 63, I think in the maybe the spring of 63, he retired from Cambridge and then he died in the fall of 63. Mm. Uh, you know, he rarely traveled more than 25 miles from home. I think we, he left, uh, he left, he's from Ireland, uh, lived in Oxford all that time. I mentioned, uh, as a boy, he went to the, he went to the, uh, the, the Normandy coast, uh, for vacation. He went to the war, you know, he was in the trenches mm -hmm. of world war two, world war one. And then when he married joy Davidman late in life marriage, which is a story of Shadowlands, uh, he took a, before just before Joy died, they they took a, 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 a as one of her final wishes, they took a, a trip to to Greece, mm. and that's uh, that's the only times he ever he was certainly invited to America regularly, and he always turned it down. He just couldn't he he couldn't leave his obligations at home. Now, Max, when you do your your live on stage play of C.S. Lewis called Most Reluctant Convert, same name as the movie. It goes on for about 75, maybe 80 minutes, and it's just you. You're up there, no notes, doing a monologue of C.S. Lewis. Mm -hmm. How much of that made it into the movie itself? 95%. Really? Yeah, maybe even 98%. It's, yeah. it's so well done. It's so well worth seeing. So I know you're pulling from all different books that Lewis has written. You're pulling from Mere Christianity, A Grief Observed, The Problem of Pain, uh, The Great Divorce. Yeah. Where, 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 where did you get most of your material for that, though? Most of the material came from Lewis's autobiography, his memoirs, Surprised by Joy. And one of the things that I did to really try to understand Lewis is it's a 250-page memoir. I transcribed it. 
I wanted to think Lewis's thoughts after him and follow his train and try to figure out, you know, why he went this way instead of that way with his thought so I could really track with him. And that was an extraordinary exercise where I could, I could see my, my personality uh, imbibing his, mm -hmm. and I could begin to see the character uh, emerge uh, through. And, there, and there's also this, this wonderful uh, uh, synthesis that emerges when you're uh, you're speaking somebody's words, and you're inside his uh, his approach to language that really does impact your your psyche. You you know you your 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 psyche begins to change. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know that's that's one of the uh, essence of of the art of acting uh, that you can mold your mind into someone else's, and uh, uh, that's what I tried to do in preparation for this film. And the play. Well, I just recall in watching the play, both in person and on DVD, that it not only has some of Lewis's best thinking in it, some of his best lines in it, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of humor in it too. Yeah. Well, he's you, a funny guy. Yeah, you work all that in. Yeah, and it's very, uh, you know, it's just very self-deprecating. He just turns phrases so quickly. You know, the the, the interesting thing about Lewis. Uh, he uh, he read everything. I mean everything from the Greeks to the moderns. Mm -hmm. He had a steel trap mind that could recall instantaneously at a, a, you know everything he read. And he had this extraordinary ability to to translate what he read into magnificent prose and speech. And he did all of that from a Christian worldview. You know, I think he is not just one of the greatest writers of the of the 20th century. I mean, that's obvious. I think he's one of the greatest writers of all time. Mm -hmm. Certainly, one, a, of, certainly yeah. one of the greatest Christian thinkers of all time, a man who could take that enormous intellect and and develop analogies that could communicate the Christian faith better than virtually anybody else I've read. Yeah, there's a there's a wonderful story. There's a a, a very famous literary critic, uh, uh, kind of not a very very brilliant man, but a, a, a not a very good man. And, and he was uh, uh, the chief theater critic of uh, I think the Guardian for many years, or the Observer. I can't remember which. Uh, his name is Kenneth Tynan. Uh, very well known in the '50s, '60s. In fact, he produced and wrote O Calcutta. That gives you a sort of a sense of what what he was like. He was a student of Lewis, and he he loved Lewis. Lewis uh, actually uh, uh, talked him out of committing suicide. Uh, mm. and he tells that story, and and when Kenneth Tynan died at his funeral oration, he had his daughter read uh, uh, the Weight of Glory or Elements of the Weight of Glory, and he he was on record as saying is that you know, he was never a Christian, but he said if I ever became a Christian, it would be. Uh, along the lines of what Lewis was was uh, was describing in in his book Miracles, mm. but uh, as a student, he tells this story, and I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't know it exactly, but you'll get the idea immediately. That uh, Lewis would uh, would kind of do this game with his students, like I see a a bookshelf behind you, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so let's. Uh, he had a bookshelf of he had forty bookshelves uh, in his in his rooms where he was a tutor. He would tell, uh, he, he told Kenneth Tynan, he said, uh, pick a number between one and 40. And uh, Tynan would say uh, 37. So he says, go to the 37th shelf. You know, they're all numbered. He says, mm -hmm. okay, uh, there's 40 books on a shelf. He says, uh, pick another number between one and 40. He'd say, okay, 26. Go to the 26th book. Uh, oh, bring the book out. Uh uh, he says, uh, pick a number between uh, one and a hundred. And uh, he says, uh, okay, uh, 86. He says, go to the 86th page. Uh, pick a number between one and 30, uh, 22. Okay, go to the 22nd line. Start reading. He'd read the first thing, and then Lewis would finish his sentence. Oh, wow. That's the story that uh, Tenneth Tynan told. It's like, you know, um, it's extraordinary, the, the kind of mind that he had. I can't even fathom that. 
I can hardly remember what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> I read stuff, Max. You know, I got so many books in here, and I haven't read most of them, but I feel smarter just for being in here. But if I pick a book off I've read, and I'll I'll open it up and I'll 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 look at something I've underlined, and I go, I don't even remember reading that, and it's underlined and starred. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Max, Lewis would Lewis would write in his books. There's a there's one very famous copy that I think he read. Uh, I think Lord Byron's Don Juan. Uh -huh. And at the end note, at the very last page, when he finishes the book, he writes at the end, never again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm never reading this book. Never again. again, never again. <laughs> well, the thing about Lewis's books is you can read them every year and go, I, I never saw that before. Yeah, no. It's, it's almost it's, like reading the Bible. You can read the Bible over again and go, I, I didn't even recognize that. That's, wow, mm -hmm. that that has a new impact for me right here, a new a new application. Friends, if you want to be on with Max McLean, Max is the star, one of the stars. There's actually three C.S. Lewis's in the new movie, Most Reluctant Convert, The Untold Story of C.S. Lewis. It's airing, airing, it's not airing, it's in the theater this coming Wednesday night, November 3rd. You need to go to cslewismovie.com, cslewismovie.com, all one word, go there, it'll pop up, and when it pops up, when the, when the, uh, when the site pops up, you're going to see that movie time should pop up if the browser knows where you are. And then there's a little hamburger up on the left, a little uh, menu item. Click on that and go down to resources. There's actually a little study guide that goes along with the movie. So you can actually talk about this with your saved or unsaved friends after you all go see the movie. So check all that out. If you want to be on video with Max tonight, just go to crossexamine.org forward slash guest, crossexamine.org forward slash guest, and we'll see about getting you on. But Max, I'm going to ask you some questions off the chat. Are you ready? Sure. Let's start with the top question. Max, do you know how C.S. Lewis came up with the name Aslan? I don't. Neither I don't. do I. I, I wish I did. And I, and I think it's a really good question, and I'm going to find out. Max, next question. I mean, but I do. will say this, that Lewis liked the way words came off his tongue. Uh -huh. Reap a cheap, uh, slub gob, wormwood, screw tape. Uh, so there could just be, it just could be sheer imagination. Uh, so somebody wrote me that uh, Narnia was uh, named after a town in Italy called Narni. I don't know if that's true, uh, but the name Narnia has a, there's a, there's a sound quality that, that, uh, that engages the imagination. It 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 uh, it takes the mind somewhere, and and I think Aslan has that quality to it. That's a con that's just a a conjecture on my part. Okay, next question. This this man is writing from the UK. He's watching from Ireland right now. Yeah. He says, Max, when will the movie be out in the UK? I can't find any listing here, and I am in Northern Ireland. Yes. Well, I'm I I've got good news and bad news for you. Uh, just today uh, we announced that uh, the, the film will air on November 7th in 14 cities in the United Kim Kingdom, but, the, but not in Ireland. And I, try, and I asked specifically, why not Belfast? Why not Dublin? And, and they said, because there's a different quote unquote code, you know, in terms of the, it, when you deliver the film to a place that some you know, some areas require this code as opposed to that, and it takes a lot of time. So uh, I do think it will be in Northern Ireland, um, uh, as I think it will be in Australia. I think it will be in New Zealand. But right now, uh, the film uh, premieres November 3rd in the United States and Canada, and it's running uh, at least to November 7th. And, and I got word recently that it's going to go beyond November 7th. And... Uh, uh, because it's, uh, I'm happy to say, uh, tickets are going very fast. And, uh, uh, but I, I do think that in, uh, and then, and then, uh, it'll be in 14 cities in England, Scotland, uh, England, Scotland. Um, uh, yeah. On November 7th. Max, same website, cslewismovie.com yeah, in the UK. On, everything should be on cslewismovie.com. Now the, 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 uh, British cities, will um i think they will populate tomorrow it was just announced today so they'll populate tomorrow okay now this question comes from facebook max did c.s lewis ever read any of the writings of thomas troward 
later in life, like the Edinburgh Lectures, The Law and the Word, do you know? Uh, I, I don't know that. I, okay. I couldn't answer that. All right. Max, you've made a career on C.S. Lewis works. Why do you respond so much to him? What I, I guess yeah, what's the, uh, well, the draw? Uh, you know, he, he's become my spiritual guide, particularly in the area of spiritual warfare. Um, I just uh, resonate with, and, and the other thing is you just don't get to the bottom of him. You know, there's just right. a, a treasure of, of so much edification that uh, will, send, will, will, will sanctify you if you, if you let right. it. Um, so he continues to be my spiritual guide. We all need spiritual guides uh, to help us read the Bible, to help us interpret the scriptures, to help us with our walk. Uh, to help us to battle the, the powers and principalities of this world, which uh, also, uh, in, in, in my view, I think it's pure spiritual warfare is the, the post-Christian, post-modern, uh, secular, uh, subjective world that we live in now that mm -hmm. everything is, uh, is uh, you know, socially constructed. You know, that's, that's uh, in my mind, uh, that's of the devil. It, you know, it's spiritual warfare, but it's taken over. And and I think Lewis, for me, he's a guy, you know, we're so educated in this kind of postmodern, post-Christian environment that it's like fish and water. And to get out of it is so hard. And Lewis is so good at helping us look at objective reality. Yeah, uh, he really in a is. very clear way. Uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that don't know Max, other than the, the Bible, a voice that he is, and maybe you've heard of him on occasion, but he has a ministry in New York City called the Fellowship for Performing Arts, and if you go to that website, you can see many other things that he does. It's also a nonprofit organization, so if you feel led to give to the arts, this is the place to do it, because Max is actually out there bringing high-quality theater into the secular world that opens the door to Christianity, and uh, it's a way to bring the gospel in through the back door, and people are, their defenses are down. In fact, I like the way you put that, Max. We've talked about this before. The way you do ministry is a way that can get into people's minds and hearts that kind of is an indirect approach, isn't it? Well, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's what Lewis taught me. He said, uh, there's, the imagination is the organ of meaning, reason is the organ of truth and what he meant by that is the imagination serves up the raw material of what we think about mm -hmm. and unless an idea captures the imagination you're not going to invest the uh rational tools to uh to uh re-examine uh to reevaluate uh, your uh presuppositions which is the first step towards change so uh that's uh that's a real important thing that the arts can do. The other thing that, uh, and I love what you do, Frank, is you know Lewis said something very, very important that I really believe. He says that you know he didn't believe that rational ar arguments create belief uh, because you know many people uh, may not believe uh, may not believe what is proved. It may be proved, but it's not you know it's not believed. But he, what he says that, but what no one defends or what no one takes the trouble to defend is soon abandoned mm. think about that yeah you know if it if it if it doesn't it doesn't rise to the if a if an idea a worldview doesn't rise to the ability that it, that that when it's attacked it doesn't get defended then people say then it's abandoned you know mm. people are left with a weak faith mm. uh, and uh and I think that's a really important thing of what you do, Frank, and what uh, C.S. Lewis was just brilliant at. And now you're carrying on that legacy. In fact, uh, you and I were about to do a joint venture at Rutgers when COVID hit. We're going to try and rekindle that once that yeah, all I'd comes love to back. Do that. Yeah. So the idea here is, is that Max is going to do his play on C.S. Lewis the first night, and then we'll invite people to that from that play to the next night where I'll do I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. So keep an eye out. Uh, for that. Uh, let me ask you another question, uh, Max. This comes from YouTube. Is the gospel shared in the movie, the movie that, that is airing this coming Wednesday? The gospel is shared in the way, Lewis, I mean, if, if, if you talk about the gospel in terms of, of uh, 
does it point to Jesus? It's absolutely clear. I do think Lewis presents the gospel in a in a way that's that's uh, uh, different than most people. At the core of so much of Lewis's writings is that is that there is another world, mm. and that is where we come from. Mm. And in the Gospels, uh, the story, the Christian story is that caught God came down from this other world into our created world and came out again, pulling us up with him. Mm -hmm. He says, that's the Christian story. Mm. Uh, and uh, that's what Christians believe. Um, and he said that... Uh, uh, you know, the, the alternative, of course, is that he's uh, a lunatic on the level of someone who claims to be, you know, you're, if you're saying you claim to be God, you know, isn't that similar, and Lewis uses this analogy, isn't that similar to saying you claim to be a poached egg? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just sheer lunacy. You know, either Jesus is, is who he says he is, or he's a lunatic at the level of someone claimed to be a poached egg, or he's a liar, you know, from the from the, uh, from the from the devil from hell itself. And unless you believe that, he says, and I can't. That's what he says. I can't believe mm. that. Mm -hmm. You turn to the Christian story, mm. and, and one of the other things Lewis is good at, and I, and, and I think uh, it's it's really important, is is compared to what. You know, because people can debunk Christianity, and and uh, but have nothing to nothing to offer in its alternative. Uh, and uh, Lewis would say, you know, like he complained bitterly about uh, uh, evil and, and suffering and, and unjust. He says, you know, he says, my 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 argument against God was that the universe was so cruel and unjust. But where had I got this notion of cruel and unjust? I call a line crooked because I have some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing the universe with when I called it cruel and unjust? So you know, this is uh, this kind of stuff is 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 the the sort of thing that you're going to see in a theatrical way. So it's not going to be like a church service. Uh, no, but it's uh, but <laughs> but the but the data or the uh, the content. Uh, will if somebody is uh, if God is pursuing them, uh, this uh, I think this play will be very very helpful. And if they're if they're open, that's really the yeah. key there. Now we have a couple of questions here about Tolkien. One is the question is what do you think of C.S. Lewis's influence over other great writers like Tolkien? Did he have an influence on Tolkien? I, I know Tolkien had an influence on Lewis, but did it go the other way, Max? Yes. Uh, uh, Lewis's influence on Tolkien was a great encourager. Uh, Tolkien uh, wrote that uh, I never would have finished, let alone published, The Lord of the Rings had it not been for the, the great encouragement of Jack Lewis. Really? Who, who saw the power of it, the saw the the genius of it, uh, even more than than Tolkien did. Mm. Tolkien really didn't know how good it was, and Jack did. Mm. And so he owes so much of uh, of our, uh, you know. The, the the other thing that's interesting is this group called the Inklings. They were they right. these were writers, Christian writers that uh, read things to each other, iron sharpening iron, and. Uh, the 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 volume of uh, of world class literature that emerged from that little group is astonishing. Mm -hmm. Lewis, Tolkien, and who was there? Was a third Charles Williams, Owen Barfield, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dorothy Sayers was uh, sort oh, of. Oh, Dorothy part Sayers of it. was in uh, there. Wow. Uh, there was uh, several others. I mean, it, it, it was a group that you know ebbed and flowed for from the twenties to the to the fifties. Yeah, we had a group. We didn't write anything, so we just called ourselves the Thinklings. <laughs> we just got together. We just talked. <laughs> we used to do that quite a bit. It was fun doing it. Now, uh, here's a question, Max. How close to battle did Lewis get during World War One? He was in the trenches. 
He was. Uh, he was wounded, uh, and he was nearly killed. In fact, uh, 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 the, the 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 bomb that hit him killed uh, the person next to him. Oh. So, uh, and uh, he uh, he went he went into convalescence. I, actually, he left. He went to the, uh, he got to the front lines uh, on his, on his nineteenth birthday, November nineteen eighteen. Uh, he was wounded in, in April of 1919 and sent home. And he had shrapnel in his body to the end of his life. Wow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, World War I was the first war where the weaponry outpaced the tactics. And to show you how bad World War I was, the French showed up when World War I started with their typical felt hats, their horses, their swords, their felt gloves, and they weren't ready for machine gun fire or mortar fire, they suffered 75,000 casualties in one day. One day. To put that in perspective, the United States lost about 58,000 people in the entire Vietnam War. So this was a brutal war, and Lewis found himself right in the middle. I guess he was there at the tail end of it, uh, wasn't he, uh, Max? Well, 19, uh, April 1918, uh, yeah. November 1918. Uh, Is when it ended. So it must have been, yeah. it must have been in, in, in 18, no, no, 17, and 18. 17, 18. 17, 17, 18. 17, 18, yeah. 17, 18, yeah, because he was, uh, he was born in 1898. So November 19. Uh, 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm, so it was, mm -hmm. and then he, uh, April of 1918. You're right. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jorge, let me know when you have uh, someone on for a video question, if you're ready. In the meantime, I'm going to ask uh, a question. This is, this is too hard a question to answer at max, but I'm going to ask you from Facebook, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from CS Lewis? Oh, there's so many to, I know to, there's, there's, there's so many, one. there's so many. Uh, I think the one I'm resonating with right now is this idea of this other world. Mm. Uh, the other thing is, is that, you know, his journey to faith, uh, his, his journey to faith, uh, was a long one. And, uh, it started with, uh, with atheism, with a very strict materialist view. And through his friendship with Owen Barfield, he uh, who challenged him about his materialist worldview, and and that part of Lewis's influence has 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 been really strong with me, because it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's supported it it affirms uh, the power of the conscience, the power of the mind, the power. Of rationality, how 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 much in the image of God that is. Mm. That mm. Uh, you know that it's uh, it's it's like it's really really key. Uh, there's a scene in the play, and I, uh, uh, I think you asked me to read some things uh, from the play, and, and this is a scene I think is worth doing. Uh, uh, his friend Owen Barfield uh, was he, he had come to believe in God, but not Christ. And, uh, and this shocked Lewis, and that started what they called a great war, a great debate between them. And so his friend Owen Barfield asked Lewis at one particular point, uh, do you believe that logic and reason bring forth indisputable truth? Mm. Lewis said, of course, I do. Uh, are your moral and aesthetic judgments valid and meaningful? Uh, uh, they are. Then Barfield says, then materialism must be abandoned. There is a hopeless discord between what our minds claim to be and what they really must be if materialism is true. We claim our minds to be reason, perceiving universal intellectual principles, moral laws, possessing I never free will. For my name. But if materialism Climate is true, staples. our minds must in reality be merely chance arrangements of atoms in skulls. And as, so Lewis argued back. He says uh, that he argued that that we are to accept reality as it is revealed to us by our senses. And he goes, you know, so it's purely empirical. And the findings of science have concluded that human reason is merely cognitive maps 
resulting from natural selection with random mutation over millions of years to confer on humans a reproductive advantage over other species. And then he sort of winks. He said, I had to say something. <laughs> That's the funny part that I remember from the play. I had to say something. <laughs> I had to say something. Yeah, because I've been defending materialism for years. So Barfield answered him. He said, if my clearest reasoning tells me that my mind is nothing more than the accidental results of atoms colliding in skulls, there must be some mistake. How could I trust my mind when it tells me that my most profound thought is merely a mental pattern resulting from biochemistry or resulting from heredity and physics? And that, that, little conversation was a huge mo movement for C.S. Lewis because it told him that rock bottom reality has to be intelligent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the, the power of the mind, the power of, you know, what we do in apologetics, the power of thought is, is really a, a clear indication of being made in the image of God. That thought right there was way ahead of its time. I think he spoke about that in The Problem of Pain, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and you work it into the play. Is it also in the movie? By the way, yeah, it's in the movie. It it's is, okay. Movie. Yeah. Friends, if you're just tuning in, cslewismovie.com, cslewismovie.com. My guest is Max McLean. You can see right here, Max plays C.S. Lewis in this movie. It's a major motion picture by a very accomplished director. It's going to be in theaters this Wednesday, November 3rd. And if you go to cslewismovie.com, you can see where it is in your local community. There are dates being added. We're not sure they're going to be added in every city, but certainly Wednesday, November 3rd, you'll be able to see it if it's not sold out to this point uh, right now. So go to cslewismovie.com. You know, Max, what you just said there is interesting because I think it's what influenced our friend John Lennox, who speaks about this quite a bit. And it certainly influenced me quite a bit uh, when I uh, started writing my book, Stealing from God, just reading Lewis on this is, uh, was so enlightening. Here's a quote that I, 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 I say on college campuses from Lewis. It's similar to what you just said, but the, the way he says it here is so succinct. I, I can't say it any better than, than he could. Here's what he said. Uh, think about this. He says, suppose there were no intelligence behind the universe. In that case, nobody designed my brain for the purpose of thinking. Thought is merely the byproduct of some atoms within my skull. But if so, how can I trust my own thinking to be true? But if I can't trust my own thinking, of course, I can't trust the arguments leading to atheism and therefore have no reason to be an atheist or anything else. Unless I believe in God, I can't believe in thought. So I can never use thought to disbelieve in God. <laughs> I think that's so that's uh, that's actually from miracles and, yeah. uh, and that's uh, that's just Lewis that was a very uh, because it, it 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 brings you to uh, to a place of awe in our mm -hmm. creator mm. you know because otherwise it's just a materialistic universe uh, in another place uh, Lewis uh, indicates that, uh, either the crude beginnings of life on this planet were dropped by a fuller, more perfect life, or it all begins with the idiocy of the universe. Mm. You know, the, and I and I think it's it's very interesting because you have to have compared to what. You know, right. it's not in isolation. There's another side to it. Uh, uh, he, you know, he he goes on to say that. Uh, one of his first steps uh, to his walk from atheism to Christianity was abandoning the absurd notion that the universe is an arbitrary alternative to nothingness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lewis was so far ahead of his time. In fact, he's so far ahead of his time, I think I can ask you this question, Max. 
question comes from YouTube. What would C.S. Lewis say about our postmodern world? Uh, I think he said it in yeah, abolition in abolition of 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 uh, abolition of man. Mm -hmm. The uh, the um, rejection of objective reality is uh, you know to to you know subjectivism is is basically. Uh, a, a denial of meaning and purpose. It's mm -hmm. everything is socially constructed. Somebody said something to me recently that that has got me thinking. He said that we as a culture have traded freedom, the uh, the the sort of uh, uh, false, you know, been duped to thinking that w we can do whatever we want to do. We can follow our heart's desires, do anything we want, um, in exchange for purpose and meaning. Mm. That we've uh, we've bought this idea of absolute freedom. You know, if I want to, uh, if if I socially construct that I am a woman, mm -hmm. then that's my reality. I can, mm -hmm. you know, the universe will adjust accordingly um, to whatever the whims of my, uh, you know, whatever reality I want to create. And of course, it's a, uh, it, you know, it is it is a way of, you know, it's like in the garden. You want to be like God, disobey God, you'll be just like God. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the that's that's the the uh, the the temptation uh, that is uh, is happening, and uh, it's stunning to me how how quickly it has uh, it has moved in that direction. Uh, at kind of a warp speed in, in my mind, I, I, I'm beginning to feel culturally, uh, uh, you know, obviously there's there's pockets, but I live here in New York City and uh, I'm beginning to feel culturally that there's been a real reaction. There's beginning to be a reaction to it that well, you, it just you, simply doesn't work. What you said earlier, I think is applies here too, Max. Remember you said if something isn't defended, it's forgotten. Yeah, it's it's abandoned. It's abandoned. Well, yeah, if the sexes aren't defended, if the if marriage isn't defended, if life isn't defended, if purpose and meaning aren't defended, it's abandoned. Yeah. It's and, easily it's a, it, yeah. and then what happens is people walk around, you know, who have these beliefs, uh they they're very insecure about them. They can't yeah. defend them. And so right. after a while, the insecurity becomes uh, oh, you know, I'm just not going to bother. It's not that important. Nobody else thinks it's important. So why should I think it's important? Mm -hmm. This is what this kind of art can do, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, I think one of the reasons that uh, we are where we are culturally now is because of bad art. Uh, it's It goes back to Lewis's saying uh, on philosophy, the famous saying, Max, you probably know it better than me, that uh, Good philosophy must exist if for no other reason to answer bad philosophy. Well, good art must exist if for no other reason yeah. to answer bad art. And you're putting out the good art that so few people are putting out. Well, and thank you for that. I mean, it's it's a calling, and it's it's a it's really a, been a joy to do to just invest in uh, in in allowing people to get to know this man because what. What I found, you know, I mentioned earlier about his desire to uh, that there is another world, and that is where we come from. He makes these other, you know, you fall in love with these other worlds. This, uh, not these other worlds, this other world, this very mm -hmm. specific mm -hmm. other world, um, and uh, and and so it, then you know we become to, we we know we're going to live for eternity. You know, one of the things I'm noticing in our culture too is that the, you know our our culture gives no uh, resources for pain and suffering. Mm. It gives no resources to deal with our mortality, and that's why you know that's why we freaked out over COVID. You know, nobody's willing to take a single risk. Right. Uh, you know, we shut down the economy because we want to live three days longer. Mm. Uh, you know, because w why not live three days long? Because we don't. We don't think there's anything else out there. Mm. You know, we're if it's atoms colliding in skulls, you know, it we deteriorate and uh, become something else, and that is um, uh, that that just leads to to uh, strange decisions, uh, uh, 
uh, strange politics and uh, a strange culture. Go to cslewismovie.com, ladies and gentlemen, to see Most Reluctant Convert, the untold story of C.S. Lewis, starring my guest, the great Max McLean here. And as we mentioned earlier in the program, there are two other Lewises that are played by other actors, a, a child Lewis and a, a young man Lewis. And Max here plays the older Lewis. And a uh, question comes in, uh, Max, why do you think Lewis was so passionate about and influenced by mythology? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, you know, he read it from childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, he loved it from childhood. So it stayed with him all his adult life. And, you know, he, he would even go back to his childhood mythologies. And of course, that's what brought him to Christ because of what he loved. He says uh, it was the, uh, uh, the great stories of the rising and dying gods. And, uh, and then, of course, Tolkien put it together for him in terms of uh, I can't remember if I told this story here or, or at other times, but, uh, uh, you know, if I meet a God, uh, if I meet a God in a, in a pagan story, I like it very much. You know, it, it resonated. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's what Hollywood is. You're writing a book about it. Uh, the, these stories uh, are all part of the, uh, the central myth of that that uh, points to you know the christian myth mm -hmm. the, the myth that became fact the true myth the true myth in which mm -hmm. all other myths point mm -hmm. uh you know that's why these stories still resonate so much uh he said somewhere about uh you know uh uh that you know fairy tales are important because we need to show not only that the, that dragons exist but that dragons can be beaten mm -hmm. uh that's uh, that's part of this this uh, archetypal reality that uh, he knows it's it's not uh, it's rooted in in the central reality of uh, that is revealed in uh, ultimately not totally but ultimately in Christ Max, what do you think Lewis had in mind? Maybe you can give us some examples of things that we experience in life that cause us to think this way. But he famously said that if if I have a desire for something that I can't be fulfilled in this life, the most logical thing to conclude is that I was made for another world. Yeah, what are some of the things? An, another it, world argument. Yeah, you know, he had. Uh, it, it, this is a theme in in the play, a theme in the film. Uh, it's his technical understanding of joy to be mm -hmm. uh, uh, distinguished sharply from happiness or pleasure, except that uh, that anybody who's ever experienced joy will want it again. Uh, he says uh, uh, it could be even a, a little bit like grief, uh, except it's the kind of grief we want. It is like the scent of a flower uh, that we have not uh, found, uh, echo of a tune we've not heard, news from a country we've not yet visited. Uh, he said these are moments, these are uh, signposts, these are uh, the golden thread that uh, leads you to, th that's a longing that we know there's something more mm. than this life. And uh, and so he, his famous statement is, uh, if I find in myself this desire, this longing, if I find myself a desire that I get all around me, it could be listening to a piece of music, reading a, a, a moment that just wows me, an extraordinary uh, vista or landscape. Uh, you know, it comes in so many uh, forms that we're, you know, kind of in awe of it. If I find in myself a desire, that no experience in this world can satisfy. The, the, the most probable explanation I was made for another world. And, and what he means by that is, you know, we have these desires and these desires never get fulfilled because we don't know what the object of the desire is. Mm -hmm. So we keep looking for false objects to fulfill desires. 
and they do nothing. They become idols, breaking the, as he says, breaking the hearts of their worshipers. Uh, and uh, and ultimately, what Lewis what Lewis found was uh, the object of his desire was the Christian gospel, mm. because it fulfilled all his longings. Mm. And he said, uh, I, uh, what I desired uh, was to uh, um, continue. Uh, he, you know, he concluded that he would continue on to that other country. Mm. And if he could, to help others do the same. The movie, again, you can access at least where it's going to show Wednesday night. Go to cslewismovie.com, cslewismovie.com. If you go in the left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a little hamburger. That's a little menu there. Click on that. There are other resources in that menu, including a little study guide that can help you. There it is. We're showing it on the screen right now, that little hamburger on the left. If you go down to resources down there, you'll see it down there, and you can you get a synopsis. You can look at a gallery of pictures. You can sign up. Uh, you can actually download a little a little study guide, discussion guide that you can then use with the folks that you see the movie with afterwards. And and Max, this kind of movie anybody can go to, right? Doesn't have to be a believer. Oh, I, I think uh, I think anybody that that is, um, you know, if 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 you look at your uh, life and let's you know let's not you know say oh, it's. Uh, people that just are not satisfied with life, mm -hmm. and, you know, just feel like, you know, uh, you know, I've got a good job. I've got everything, but there's got to be more. Something's missing. Yeah. Something's missing. You know, what is that? It, in Lewis's case, it's that desire. Mm -hmm. What is that desire? What do I need to fulfill? What is mm -hmm. the object of that desire? Um, I think this film will, will help people to, uh, to locate that. Well, yeah. again, go to cslewismovie.com. And uh, I just have one or two more questions here, Max. And then I want to get just a couple minutes from you on the other other work you're doing that people can access as well. Uh, the question is, uh, well, when will we see it online or DVD? I, I, it will be at some point. We don't know when, though, do we? Yeah, I, I, I mean... What it is, it's it's a we have a contractual obligation with the movie chains that are showing this. We've got there's hundreds of new you know movies, Cinema yeah. Regal, AMC, and and so we can't really speak about anything that's going to happen afterwards. But I can just okay. tell you that uh, uh, and there's a you know a window of time before mm -hmm. that can happen. But that uh, there will be opportunities down the road. Final question uh, on C.S. Lewis. Here it is, Max. C.S. Lewis strengthened my faith with his argument for evil. Did he maintain his faith and finish well, to your knowledge? Um, I have the, the last book he wrote was the letters to Malcolm, chiefly on prayer. Uh, prior to that, he wrote the grief, a grief observed. Right. And in the grief observed, he railed against God because he lost the love of his life late. You know, he, he, Joy he fell in love late in, yeah. late in life. And uh, they had a, a very happy marriage that lasted three years. Mm -hmm. And then God took her, uh, uh, took, you know, hadn't gave, she had cancer and, and uh, took her. And uh, that just devastated Lewis. And so he wrote, uh, he never intended to publish it, but he just wrote uh, journals, uh, you know, uh, 60 pages of journals. Uh, his feelings about his grief, and uh, and in parts of it, he it goes to very dark places. Uh, I I uh, uh, liken it to Job, uh, mm -hmm. the way Job uh, 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 railed at God for his suffering, and uh, and and of course, you know, in the end, Job was acquitted. You know. Uh, because he was uh, forthright in, you know, in, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, God said, well, where were you when I did X, Y, and Z? Right. Uh, but uh, so uh, some people have gotten, the, the, because of that railing and grief observed, some people have thought they lost his faith. And 
and uh, and there's some interpretation from the movie Shadowlands that uh, he lost his faith. Uh, in reality, uh, that was the furthest thing from the truth. When he was uh, after his wife died, he was ready to go be with his maker, and uh, he wrote a, a really wonderful little book uh, called uh, Letters to Malcolm, chiefly on prayer. And I highly recommend it. And that, and, uh, that was actually published. He wrote it the last year of his life. And uh, it was published posthumously. Mm. Uh, and I would, uh, uh, I think he, uh, he ran the race uh, and finished well. In fact, I think I remember in reading Grief Observed that at one point he says, I have a haphazard intellect. And he talked about some of his other deficiencies and he said how much of reality can my faculties actually let in mm -hmm. right mm, yeah. you know he, yeah he was doubting certain things but then he realized there's so much i don't know about yeah. evil and god may have a good reason for it essentially mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. max I, I we always ask our audience a final question about hope but before i do i want to also mentioned that it's not just this movie you do, but we want everybody to go to cslewismovie.com and check out where they can see this movie this coming Wednesday. It might be in theaters Thursday and through the weekend, depending upon what city you're in, but definitely on Wednesday, friends. So go to cslewismovie.com to see The Most Reluctant Convert, The Untold Story of C.S. Lewis. See where you can see it. You're not going to see the movie on that site, but see where you can see it. But Max, the Fellowship for Performing Arts is an organization that we like to support personally because you are putting out wonderful art uh, in a secular format or in a secular world, I should say. Uh, what else are you doing besides this major major motion picture as if that's not enough? Yeah, well, we do have a, a great tour of the great divorce what a wonderful piece about spiritual warfare i saw that here in charlotte last yeah it's two a years really ago. strong yeah. piece and, yeah. and it feels stronger even now uh -huh. um and that uh is playing uh you go to fpatheater.com fpatheater.com or great divorce on stage.com either one of those great divorce on stage.com and uh, that's going to be playing uh, next week in grand rapids then uh, st louis indianapolis and uh, cleveland over the next month. Uh, and then uh, Most Reluctant Convert will have a small tour down in uh, uh, the Florida Keys, University of Florida, University of Michigan, and Ohio Christian University in January, February. And then in uh, March, we begin a workshop production uh, leading to a tour of the sequel to The Most Reluctant Convert. It's a play called Further Up, Further In. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what that follows is, you know, when Lewis was converted, it wasn't obvious he would become the person he became, you know. Mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, but the trajectory of his life was amazing. And the, the, uh, the, the, the productivity, you know, he was converted in uh, the fall of 1931. And from the, nine, the fall of 1931 to like the... Uh, the end of 1940s, he was incredibly productive and became the kind of Lewis, the Lewis that we knew and know. Uh, and that was before the huge success of his life with the Chronicles of Narnia, which began to be published in the early 50s. Mm. And uh, so I want to focus on another sort of untold story as that piece between 19 you know, after his conversion prior to Narnia. And will that be you again on stage? Yeah, that'll be a, a, a similar format to Most Reluctant Convert. Okay, friends, Most Reluctant Convert, the play is a very entertaining play that Max plays alone. I've seen it several times. It's also in DVD if you want to see it. But uh, if he comes to your neighborhood, you want to take it you want to get tickets and you want to bring a friend, safe friend, but particularly an unsafe friend. Uh, because Max, the other thing you do during these, uh, during this tour is after the, the play is over, you leave stage, you go backstage for five minutes and come back out as you. Yeah. And then you answer questions. 
And I enjoy that. I really yeah. do. It gives me a real sense of how the play connected and how it landed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go to Fellowship for, for Performing Arts. It's FPA Theater, R-E on the end, FPA Theater, F-P-A-T-H-E-A-T-R-E.com, FPA Theater.com. You'll see the movie that we've been talking about. You'll see where you can get tickets for it, but you'll also see where you can get tickets for Max and other actors with the Fellowship for, for, for Performing Arts when they're out on tour. And it's well worth seeing in person. And the movie, of course, is, is coming up. Don't forget cslewismovie.com. Max, absolute last question. This show is called Hope One. Where does our hope as Christians come from? Well, it's in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Here we have no continuing city. We await the one to come. I think, you know, uh, one of the things is uh, that drives me is uh, he has put eternity in our hearts. He's made us a little lower than the angels. Mm. Um, and that just drives us to our real home. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you see the movie, cslewis.com. Go there to see it. Max, it's been a pleasure as always, my friend. Thanks for the outstanding work you're doing. And we're going to follow it. And uh, the next time that you have another tour coming up, we have to do either Hope One or we have to do the I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist podcast and get the word out. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Great to All be right, with brother. you. All right, brother. All right, guys. We'll see you here next time. God bless. Bye-bye.